I am the fire of the eyelid, of the mighty waterfall, the good god of druidism, of the Tour de Danan, the mighty one of great knowledge, and horseman great father are my three names. Few gods of the Gales are as well known as the Dagda. In the medieval tales, he is both exalted as a great king, father, and druid, and the object of mockery. He is said to have been the king in the beginning, yet presented as a later lord, whose rule goes unexplained. He is known by many names, and is the father of many important gods, but his nature is mysterious, hidden beneath the seven cowls that obscure his face. What is the true nature of this great father, husband of the frightening Morrigan, a druid, a trickster, a liar, a digger of the earth, and the distributor of the mounds? Who is the Dogda? Hi friends, I'm Kevin McLean. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and consider supporting my work through Patreon or PayPal. Much thanks to all of my supporters. In the intoxication of the Ulsterman, Kuroi Makdaira has provided the most detailed description of the god in any surviving sources. I saw a large-eyed, large-thighed, noble, great, immensely tall man with a splendid gray cloak about him, with seven short black equally smooth cowls around him. Shorter was each upper one, longer each lower. At either side of him were nine men. In his hand was a dreadful iron staff on which was a furious end and a smooth end. His play and amusement consisted in laying the furious end on the heads of the nine, whom he would kill in the space of a moment. He would then lay the smooth end on them so that he would reanimate them in the same time. Many guises has the one described, said Kuroi. Who is that, then? asked Alil. Not hard to tell, said Kuroi. The great Dagda, son of Ethnu, the good god of the Tuatha de Danan. To magnify valor and conflict, he wrought confusion upon the host in the morning this day, and no one in the host sees him. It should be obvious from the description that he is not the Gaelic Thor, as he is sometimes wrongly depicted. He is a complex figure that can only be understood when examining in detail his various associations within the overall Indo-European worldview. He is a god with many names, though he is most commonly known as the Dagda, or Daga in modern Gaelic pronunciation. Medieval commentators generally believed it meant the good god, which is often accepted by modern scholars as well. Good isn't intended to have a moral connotation here, but is used in terms of ability. When the god Nuada asks the Dagda what tasks he will perform in the great battle, and he replied that, The power which ye boast, I shall wield it all myself. It is you who are the Dagda, said everyone. Wherefore, thenceforward the name Dagda adhered to him. In other words, since he vows to be able to wield all of the skills previously mentioned, he is called the Good God, because he is greatly skilled at everything. He makes this comment after Mothgen the Sorcerer said he would cast the mountains of Ireland upon the Fomorians, and roll their summits against the ground. The cupbearers vowed to remove all the water from the rivers of Ireland, to make the Fomorians die of thirst. And Fyrgol the Druid said he would cast fire on the faces of the Fomorians, robbing them of their senses and strength, and bind their urine. But he would increase the bravery and strength of the men of Ireland. 
The Dagda claims the ability to wield all of the powers that the sorcerers and druids profess, and it is with these arts that he is most often connected. The tale of the Dagda is a confused one, obscured by Christianization of original tales. In the typical story presented in the book The Taking of Ireland, we are told that he is one of three central kings of the Tuatha de Danann. Nuada holds the sword of Findius, Lug the spear of Gorius, and the Dagda the cauldron from Murius. He accompanied Nuada when he led the Tuatha de Danann to Ireland in the dark clouds and fought against the fear bullock. Then he aided Lug in the second battle of Mugturid against the Fomorians. And finally he served as king when Lug was overthrown by the sons of Kermit. However, this structure is likely not the original one, or at least not the only one. As the Great Father and the Father of Existence, as he refers to himself as in the Second Battle of Mugturid, he may have been the first king. No definite myth survives about his rule, but he is always thought to be Lord of the Shida, or She in modern pronunciation, the fairy mounds and burial mounds of ancient kings. He is said to have been killed by a poisoned dart of Kethlin, wife of Balor. His grave site is the Brug Nabonia, the most famous burial site of kings, who are believed to enjoy a bright afterlife in his abode filled with endless food and drink. In one tale, his home is at Ushnach, from where he could look out over all of Ireland. One of the most used names for the Dagda is Echith Ol Ather, or Echi Ol Ather in modern pronunciation, meaning Horseman Greatfather. The title Ol Ather is directly cognate with the name given to the Norse god Odin, Allfather. This cannot be a coincidence and a number of aspects of Norse Odin have a common origin with the Dagda. Often he is simply referred to as Echith, and many later legendary kings named Echith may be named after him, and are occasionally associated with similar mythical themes. The name is derived from the word for horse, and it is likely that in an earlier period he was not the great horseman, but the great horse. The third common name of the Dagda is Ruid Ro Essa, the Mighty One of Great Knowledge, sometimes translated as Red One of Great Knowledge. It is explained in the Book of Leinster that Ergna, meaning understanding, is the son of Ekni, wisdom, who is the son of the three gods of art, who are the sons of Brigid, who is a lore master, who is the daughter of the Dagda who is the mighty one of great knowledge. It explains that the Dagda is the son of all of the arts, Makna Nulla Ndana, and that he was the youth who had every art. Knowledge and poetry are consistently linked to him. He is sometimes called Dagda of the Songs. When historical figures are compared to him and praise poetry, it is in the context of them being extremely knowledgeable or master poets. Saint Cormac, who is both a king and a noted scholar, who composed Cormac's glossary, is given such praise in the Book of Leinster. Cormac the Wonderful Sage, after the form of the Dagda I declare, son of Cullenin, a clear song, with great beautiful chanting. His children are likewise connected to these themes. Brigid, or Brige, his daughter, is called the goddess of the Philly. His son, Angus MacOg, or Anus, is connected to prophecy and knowledge. A third son, Kermit, is sometimes called Honeymouth, or the Harper. Under the name Fer Ben, the Dagda is also called the father of Rigberf, meaning King Bard, which may in fact be another name for Kermit. Aid or in modern Gaelic pronunciation, Ug, simply means fire, and is cognate with the Latin word for temple, derived from the altar fire. 
The Dagda is not only a master of music and poetry, but connected to its origin. In the Tanbo Freuch it is said, The illustrious triad are three brothers, namely Sorrow Strain, Joy Strain, and Sleep Strain. Bowen from the Shida is the mother of the triad. It is from the music which Uathna, the Dagda's harper, played that the three are named. The Dinshenahas of Alach says, Who is the king over all Erin, sweet-sounding, radiant? Who but the skillful Dag? He is also the god of druidry, or magic. In the Battle of Mugtarid, he proclaims that, I will take the side of the men of Ireland, with noble slaughter and complete destruction and witchcraft. In the typically available translation, this last word appears instead as sorcery, but in Gaelic, amidhti refers specifically to witchcraft, from amith meaning a witch, hag, or other female magical figure. He possesses all magic, even that which is generally relegated to women, akin to Odin's practice of sedir. The word for complete destruction here, ad milid, can also be translated as blight, hindering, derangement, casting the evil eye, or other harmful magical effects, and it is this meaning which may be intended. When he is described to Kuroi going about the troops, he is spreading confusion, increasing the desire to fight, something also connected to his wife, the Morrigan. When his son Kermit declares that he has all the magical powers of his father, he declares that he will turn the blades and points of Lug's weapons and render them useless. In the taking of the Shida, it says of him, There was a wondrous king over the Tuatha Day in Ireland, Dagon by name, the Dagda. Great was his power even over the sons of Mill, after they had seized the land. For the Tuatha Dé damaged the grain and the milk of the sons of Mill, until they made a treaty with the Dagda. Thereafter, they preserved their grains and their milk for them. Dagon may mean something like greatly good, but it may also refer to the Semitic god mentioned in the Bible, Dagon, which appears in old Gaelic texts. How much they knew of the nature of Dagon beyond what is said of him in the Bible is hard to say, but he is a fertility god. If they knew it or not, it does align with many powers ascribed to the Dagda. Of the fort of Alach, it is said, Alach, the hill where the Dagda slept, red are its flowers, many its houses, few its plunderings, plum its stones. Though there were many gods, and many different tribal names for them, the early Gaelic pantheon seems to have revolved around three chief deities, Nuada, Lug, and the Dagda, not always by these names. They are associated with different aspects of nature, the mind, and social roles. All three of them are inevitably involved in weather and seasonal change in their own ways. Nuada was said to bring the gods to Ireland in clouds that covered the sun. And he is linked to water. Lug summons the fierce powers of floods, winds, lightning, and light of the sun and moon. The Dagda, however, was believed to rule over the seasons or weather in relation to produce, profit, and crops. In the wooing of Edain, it says, his other name was the Dagda, for it was he who used to do the miracles and ruled the seasons and the produce for them. This aspect is also emphasized in the Sheetha mounds that he ascribes to himself. Sheetha Lethet Lachtmaig, the Sheetha of the wide milk fields, Oi Asith, the sheep growing, Sheetha Banya, the white sheath, perhaps referring to Banya as in milk. It is also one of the key associations of his daughter Bridget, 
who manages domesticated animals and ensures the bounty in the household. Of the Brug Nabojnia it is said, Behold the fairy mound before your eyes. It is plain for you to see it is a kingly dwelling. It was built by the harsh Dagda. It was a shelter, it was a keep renowned for strength. Entertainment was made by him for the king, in the mound by means of lasting deception. Thence is named, it is not a question without a key. Mound of refuse before the eyes of the hosts. The idea that the Dagda made the mound, which is also called the Mound of Refuse, links it to the idea which Cúhollán states in the wooing of Ever, when it says that after Lug's victory, the Tuatha Dei put on a giant feast for him, and that the hill at Taltu was the refuse from that feast. This appears to be the same type of myth applied to a different site. The Dagda is presented as being a cook for High King Conora, consistently connecting the Dagda with food. The connection between the Dagda and crops may be related to control over the seasons. In the Battle of Mug Turret, when he and his brothers Ogma and Lug come to the camp of the Fomorians to retrieve his stolen harp, he calls out, Come Dawa de Bla, come Kor Ketharhar, come summer, come winter, mouths of harps and bags and pipes. The exact translation of the first name, Daur de Bla, is not certain, but it may be from Daur da Bla, meaning oak of two shouts, plains, or borders, or it may be from Daur de Abla, meaning murmuring apple. The second name, Kor Ketharhar, means the four angled harp, but more strictly, the harmonized four angles. It is shown here related to the ordering of the seasons, as well as the origin of all music. The cosmic harmony, which is represented by the harmonious flowing of time, which the Fomorians disrupted, and which must be taken back from them for order to be restored. Lug overcomes the Fomorian army through military force, and the Dagda restores harmony through the retrieval of his harp. This association with seasons and produce may be similar to Greek Kronos and Roman Saturn, both progenitor gods linked to seasons and crops. A Dinshenha's tale about Mag Merthemna describes how the Dagda drove water from the land along with an octopus. Some say this shows that he was a thunder god, as he battles a sea monster akin to Thor. But the context of this battle is different. The battle is purely a magical chant, and the focus is on removing the waters from the land, contrary to the nature of a storm god, it would seem. In the tale of the birth of his son Angus, he makes nine months appear like one day. Bridget, adopted as a Christian saint, but originally a daughter of the Dagda, is connected to fire and sun. St. Brocken's hymn to her says, A day of reaping for her, it was well reaped. No fault was found there with my pious one. It was dry weather ever in her field, though the land around poured heavy rain. Another hymn says, Bridget, every good woman, flame golden sparkling, may she bear us to the eternal kingdom, the sun fiery radiant. A special symbol called St. Bridget's Cross is made out of reeds and is solar in nature. However, her primary functions are with maintaining livestock, feeding the household, and producing plenty, including financial wealth. The Dagda also has a son called Aed, meaning fire, and is sometimes himself called Aed. However, it's explained in relation to the Dagda that this aid actually means I rather than fire. Scottish Gaelic folklore says Angus and Bridget became rulers of summer. Bridget was held captive during the winter by Bera, 
but eventually she and Angus came to rule as Berda weakened. During the hottest days of summer, Berda sends the Thunderhag to battle them, or in some cases, she comes herself. This Thunderhag doesn't bring rain, but actually withholds it, causing fires and droughts to sweep the land. Both Angus and Bridget are powerless to stop her, so they call the hero, Conal Curlew, and he climbs a hill and casts a spear at the clouds as the Thunderhag is rolling by in her chariot, causing the chariot wheel to break the clouds and bring the rain. This shows that Angus and Bridget are unable to affect the weather. Not only the rains, but also summer itself. They are dependent upon the seasonal cycle and the lightning hero god. Angus and Bridget's rule of summer may have more to do with the growth of plants and fertility of earth and animals. They are thought to personify aspects of the season and are thus connected to the powers of the sun of that season. Angus's title Mac Og, or Young Sun, is suggestive, perhaps, of fresh growth that emerges up from the earth. In a Denshenahas entry for the Brug, it calls Angus the son of the bald tree, suggestive of exactly this idea of vegetative growth. An identical concept is found concerning the Slavic god Urillo, a god of plant life and fertility, whose name comes from an Indo-European root meaning summer or spring. The name Angus means one power, which is to imply sexual desire and the force of uniting. He is said to spread love through his birds, which however was believed to be a deadly disease. In Britain and Gaul, he was known as Mabon or Maponos, linked with Roman Apollo. But Welsh tales of Mabon show he was, like in Gaelic tradition, thought to dwell in the earth. Bridget is connected with the celebration of Imbo, explained in Cormac's glossary as the time that sheep's milk comes, which requires the ewe to be impregnated. This is likely related to the name of one of the doctor's homes, Oi Asith, meaning growing sheep. Her connection to sun and fire is probably similar to that of Angus, as seasonal expressions of powers of the sun, heat, and fertility. Yet during the winter, Bridget may have been thought to dwell beneath the earth, emerging alongside the milk of ewes and the budding of trees as expressions of her power, a power whose origin resides in the Dagda. According to the Carmena Gedelica, the sighting of a snake emerging on Bridget's day was a good sign from her that winter was coming to an end, yet there is hardly a more chthonic symbol than a serpent. The etymology of Kermit's name is not certain. It may refer to Kermneth, meaning lopping or trimming. He is best known for sleeping with or stealing away Lug's wife. And he has three children, which may well have been born of Lug's wife, who are commonly known as Makkul, Makkecht, and Makgrian. Son of the hazel, son of the plow, and son of the sun. They are paired with Eru, Banva, and Fulla, the triple goddesses of Ireland. Though it doesn't tell us much, it continues a theme of sun, crops, and knowledge. The hazelnut is one of the prime symbols of druidic knowledge in Ireland, and this knowledge was derived from the Dagda. A Dinshinchas entry for Drum Suamag says, Tulach der, meaning hill of tears, to wit, the tears of the great Dagda, which he shed in bewailing his son, Kermit. Then he beheld the blaze of destruction. Another version changes Kermit's name for Eith, the Dagda's other son, but it possibly refers to either the way that they were killed or to their funeral pyre. In a few tales, people involved in adultery are burned in hilltop fires. 
It is possible that in origin, Aed was the god of the sacrificial fire and the funeral pyre, both of which send sacrifices and the dead into the realm of the gods. This fire would have been created by a druid, and thus the fire was the son of the druid god. The doctor gave his son Aed Magfluichros, meaning the plain of wet wood. That he dwells within a place called wet wood suggests that he was fire itself, and some tales mention Vulcan using the Roman god of fire's name as dwelling within the mounds beneath the earth. He fell in love with Echrid, meaning steeds, but she refused his advances because she was married to Codal, perhaps meaning animal hide. The Dagda told his son to take her by force and to take Codal prisoner. All of the woman's family rose up to rescue her, and they stormed the house of Aed and won her back. The Dagda musters all his sons to make war, but Elkvar, the judge, stopped them and awarded lands from the Dagda to the wronged party. This location seems to refer to a small island off the east coast now called Ireland's Eye, an English translation of a Norse name. But given that Aed, in relation to a name for the Dagda, is explained as meaning eye, perhaps this Norse name and this myth somehow are related. Aed also sleeps with Tethra, either meaning a scald crow or the sea, and was killed by her husband, Korken, which means pointed head. Finally, under the name Aed Avrith, the Dagda is said to have been the father of Lavrith, mentioned in several Dinshenha's tales and in the wasting sickness of Kuhulan where Cúhullin helps Lavrith wage a battle in the underworld, akin to the Welsh tale where Araun, the king of the underworld, has Pwys fight a battle for him. Lavrith appears as a ruler of the underworld of Magmel, surrounded by many daughters of the Dagda. Fan is also a daughter of the Dagda, linked to Cúhullin's near-death experience. He is also father of Ange, a name possibly referring to a heavy burden. She has gathered many sticks to make herself a new tub, because the one the Dagda had made for her dripped when the sea was at full tide, but would not drip when it was at low tide. The tale explains the tides through the Dagda's peculiar manufacture of the Earth's boundaries. Yet despite solar and fire connections of some of the Dagda's children, the god himself is not pictured as luminous. He is a concealed god who dresses in dark, earthy colors. He creates a massive boundary ditch around the provinces called the Track of the Dogda's Staff, linking him to the boundaries. He also created many such ditches around fortresses, which King Bress had tasked him with during his inglorious rule. His island of learning was Murius, with Mur likely meaning earthen ditches, mounds, and walls. One of his names is Kera, meaning Dark One, and he is once called Kera in the Clod, meaning Dark One of the Ditches. In the fitness of names, it is said, he was a god of the earth to them due to the greatness of his power. In the tale of the invasion of Nevid, the Dagda is referred to as Fer Ben, a name the Dagda also gives to himself in the Battle of Magturid, most likely meaning Horned Man. And he is called King of the Land, Ri Nechir, referring to the ground or earth. In Gaul and Britain, there are archaeological examples of such a Horned Man, most famously on the Gunderstrup Cauldron. It is possible that this figure represents a god akin to the Dagda, and symbolism around this god suggests he was a lord of the earth. The Dagda has many epithets that suggest such a nature, such as down, meaning dark or brown, dur, hard, dron, solid, drechvor, big-faced, 
Drechruid, reddish brown face, and this large face is compared to the size of a field. Drech can be used to describe the surface of the ground, and in English we say face of the earth. He is often linked to Ruid, which refers to a reddish brown color, such as the fur of a deer. He is also once called Dagde Drechur, which may mean earth faced or soil faced. In the Battle of Mugturid, a comical scene unfolds after the Dagda is sent by Lug to spy on and delay the Fomorians. The Dagda is offered a massive amount of porridge, for he was said to greatly love it, but it was provided to him in a giant pit in the earth. This was done to mock him, but also so that he could not reproach them for being inhospitable, meaning that the Dagda also oversaw hospitality something closely linked to his daughter Bridget as well. Yet this practice of feeding a god from a hole in the earth is exactly akin to real methods of sacrifice to deities of the earth, for which there is archaeological evidence for in Britain. Afterwards, he is so full, his belly is as big as a cauldron. He then comes across a beautiful young woman whom he desires, but she wrestles him to the ground, overpowering him, throwing him down, and beating the crap out of him. Literally. She is the daughter of Indech, the king of the Fomorians, and the scene is intended to be silly, but it may be connected to the use of manure on fields. Afterwards, she demands a ride on his back, as if he were a horse. He is described in that scene as wearing horsehair boots with the fur turned outward, and in a more archaic period he may have been thought of as a horse. Indech's daughter wants a ride to her father's house, but as he is the king of the Fomorians, that would be in the other world, or at the very least conceptualized as somewhere across the sea. Yet the Dagda does give her a ride there on his back, and copulates with her there, showing his ability to travel to the underworld and his close connection to it. It's likely part of the reason he was chosen by Lug for this mission to the Fomorians. One of the many names he uses to refer to himself in the scene is Fer Ben, or Fer Ben Bruch, meaning Horned Man of the Border. The copulation is also an expression of his fertility, and it's the second time in one short tale that he engages in it. It was said that he put large stones in his belt and that they fell to the earth, which some people called the testicles of the Dagda. His sons are also involved in episodes where they steal the wives of other gods, and he himself does this with the conception of Angus. The most obvious symbol, however, of the Dagda's mastery over earthly fertility is his cauldron, one of the four sacred artifacts of the gods. It never runs dry and is able to satisfy all who come to it. He received it and his magical training from the island of Murius, with Mur either referring to the earthen mound or dike, or to abundance. He possesses a girdle for cooking, and his wife, the Morrigan, has a cooking spit. In the tale Da Derga's Hostel, the Dagda is described as a fair-looking man with grey hair, who is the cook for King Conora, along with two apprentices, strength and accomplishment. Though we may not picture the Dagda as a chef, it shows he was consistently connected with the provision of food, and this also extends to the realm of the dead, where the kings in death reside in the home of the Dagda, or Angus, and feast and drink endlessly. Also connected with fertility is his status as Great Father. In his dialogue with Indech's daughter, he refers to himself as the Great Father of Existence and the Denier of the Great Decay, suggesting he brought the world into being and maintains it from destruction. 
Though the Gaelic creation myth has been destroyed beyond the possibility of genuine recovery, the Dogda may have been an instrumental figure in it. His mother is Ethnu, pronounced today as Enya, the same mother as Lu, and sometimes also said to be the mother of Dienkecht, Goivnu, Kredna, Luchtena, Nuada, and sometimes Ogma. The name Ethnu may be related to Ethach, meaning cattle, and is once said to be another name for Bowen, which originally meant white cow. In origin, she may have been the great cow goddess, the same as the magical cow known as Glass Govnen, and similar to Norse Adumbla. The Dagda's father is Elitha, a Fomorian whose name means art. He appears to have been an abstract concept used to explain the descent of the gods of art. His wife is the Morrigan. Her name is thought to mean Great Queen and would be a good match for the Great Father, although it may be related to Mare, as in Nightmare. She is described as the Lamia of the Gales, a frightening figure who contrives the deaths of men and instigates wars. There is some evidence to suggest that she was at one point an aspect of an earth goddess. The paps of the Dagda's consort, sometimes identified as Morrigan, other times Anna, are hills near the Brug complex, where Kermat was said to be born. Yet in surviving sources, her overriding characterization is frightening and connected with war and death. We can tentatively compare this to how Roman Saturn was originally paired with the goddess Lua, who was offered bloodied weapons of war and linked to death and destruction. The Dagda's mistress is the daughter of the Fomorian king Indech. Not much is known about her, not even her name for certain, but that she is the daughter of Indech reinforces her underworld connections. Finally, the Dogda's typical weapon is probably not a club, and certainly not a thunder club. In the earliest sources, it is called the Lorug Aduathmar, the dreadful or abominable staff. Lorug goes back to Proto-Indo-European Lorgos, which referred to both clubs and staffs. In Old Gaelic, the Lorug could refer to a wand or staff of office like a scepter or a staff of columkilia, a club, a hurley stick, or really any long-handled wooden implement. In translations of Greek and Roman stories, Lorug is sometimes used to refer to the caducius of Hermes. A story is told of how he obtained this staff. After his son Kermit was killed by High King Lug for having taken his wife, the Dagda traveled all over the world to find a way to bring him back from the dead. Somewhere in the far east of the world, he finds three brothers traveling down a road with their father's great treasures, a magic staff, a cloak of shape change, and a shirt that protects against sickness and sorrow. They explain that the staff they carry can kill with one end and revive with the other. He asks them if he can see it for a moment, and when they hand it to him, he strikes them dead with it. And then he uses it to revive Kermit, perhaps the world's first highway robbery. Its furious end was called the Anfud, and in later sources, sometimes the staff itself is called Lorug Anfud, meaning the furious or stormy staff. This meaning of storm is not the heart of the word, however, which is formed as a negative of feth, meaning calm. One end is calm, the other is not calm. Anfud takes the meaning of storm to describe weather which is not calm. This is not the description of a lightning weapon, but rather it is an artifact that holds the power of life and death. In modern Scottish Gaelic, Anug is the descendant of Anfud. It carries the meaning of roaring, raging of sea, 
a sea which is not calm, but it also means breath, lung power, the activity of breathing. The breath is closely linked to the soul and the force of life. Certainly, the Dogda's staff is intended to demonstrate mastery over a spirit force and the power of reincarnation, which in turn could be connected to the wind. It's very similar in nature to the staff of Hermes. In a Gaelic version of the Aeneid, it describes Mercury's staff in the following way. And he brought his winged staff, namely, one of the ends is with life and the other end is with death. One of the Dagda's more secretive names is Eid Avrith. At the beginning of the tale of how he got his staff, he proclaims, I am Eid Avrith of Es Ruid, namely, the good god of Druidism, of the Tuatha de Danann, the mighty one of great knowledge, and the horseman great father are my three names. A straightforward translation of this name means fire of the eyelid, but this is not the true meaning. It's explained that aid in this case means eye, because the eye is the fire of the eyelid. In the Wasting Sickness of Cúhullin, Fan is named as one of the daughters and explained as the tear of the eye. The connection between fire and eye seems to be very ancient in Celtic thought, for the Indo-European word for sun, sol, has become a Gaelic word meaning eye, sul. The use of aid in relation to the Dagda utilizes the same associations between light, fire, and sight that lead to the word for sun, meaning eye. Various tales are attached to Eis Ruid. One of the most repeated is that Eis Ruid, son of Badarn, father of Maha, drowned in Eis Ruid, giving it the name. Before this, it was said to have been named Eis Down. And this is important because Down is one of the epithets commonly given to the Dagda, but it is also the name of the god of the house of the dead, who is in some cases said to be the son of the Dagda. Now we cannot know for certain that this Eid Ruid is the same as Eid Avrith, but there is good reason to think so. What was special about the falls of Ruid, known as Asaro in English, is that they were a famous salmon area. Salmon are linked to knowledge in both Gaelic and Welsh sources. Aedhrua drowned there. The Dagda proclaims that he dwells there. But it is also where the legendary wise man, Fintan Macbohra, lost his eye in the form of a salmon. Fintan possessed all the knowledge of all the people who had ever been in Ireland. He had lived for thousands of years, taking the form of different animals every time he grew old. When he was in the form of a salmon, he leapt out of the water at Ace Ruid in the winter and got stuck on the ice. An eagle who had also lived since the earliest days came down and ate his eye, and ever since he had been one-eyed. A separate tale features a different one-eyed salmon who lives in the falls calling himself Gol, meaning one-eyed. It isn't a coincidence that the most famous wise man of Ireland loses his eye at a location connected to the Dagda and a one-eyed salmon. There are echoes here that strongly suggest that this tale has an identical origin with Odin sacrificing his eye and placing it in the well of Mimir, both of which likely go back to a common Indo-European source. A tale in the Dinshenahas tells how King Echith, son of Luchta, was one-eyed and had to give up his remaining eye to a trickster who threatened to curse him. In Indo-European traditions, knowledge is related to the underworld. In many cases, to gain knowledge especially of the future, one must journey to the underworld and speak with the dead. Odysseus does this in the Odyssey. Odin does this 
and in Gaelic tradition, it is said that people would seek out Angus, the son of the Dagda, on Samhain night at the brew, the one night of the year that it was opened, and the people would see the children of the Dagda lingering on the grave mounds. Knowledge was also thought to be concentrated in hazelnuts that grew in the other world, around the sources of the waters, where they would drop into the waters and be eaten by salmon who would then possess all knowledge. Anyone who caught and ate this salmon would obtain its knowledge. Cognate tales exist between Gaelic, Welsh, Slavic, and Norse about obtaining knowledge from tasting a salmon or dragon while being cooked. The Dagda is the master of that knowledge, but he is a devious god who has many names, many forms, and many lies. Cormac's glossary says the following. Names of the wife of the Dagda. Lie, guile, and disgrace. This is hardly the only example of these qualities being connected to the god. One of his homes is Bru Ruer, meaning belly of lies. He lies to Elkvar in order to sleep with his wife. He coaches his son Angus in how to rob the Bru either through guile or sword point. He kills Krindenvel, the satirist, by sneaking gold into his food, causing him to choke to death on it. And then he is able to escape punishment through crafty wordplay. He is sent by Lug to deceive and delay the Fomorian forces, and he succeeds in winning the support of the daughter of Indech. He steals his magical staff by murdering its owners, and he steals his harp from the Fomorian camp. He tells Aed to take Echid by force and imprison her husband. He rules over mounds, and he destroyed the grains and milk of the gales until they made a treaty with him. He is a deceptive god who comes in many forms, cloaked, hooded, with a staff that kills with one end and revives with the other who is a son of art, and who is the god who possesses every art. And perhaps until now he has succeeded in deceiving a great many people who have been interested in Gaelic mythology as to his true nature. It is said, When the sons of Mill reached Erin, their sagacity circumvented the Tuatha de Danann, so that Erin was left to the partition of Amargan Gluenvar, son of Mill. For he was a king poet and a king judge, and he divided Erin into two parts, and gave the part that was underground to the Tuatha de Danann, and the other part to the sons of Mil, his own mortal people. The Tuatha de Danann went into the hills and fairy places, so that they spoke with the fairy folk underground. This period of going underground is connected to the rule of the Dagda or his children. It is often thought or explained that this is the imposition of Christianity which drove the gods of the sky beneath the earth, yet it may well have been exactly how this particular branch of gods around the Dagda was conceived of to begin with. Among the Greeks there is a god known as Polynomos, the one of many names. The reason he is given many names is because there is a reluctance to use his true name. He is instead called things like the Wealthy One, Host of Many, the Unseen One, Wealthy Father, Killer, Giver of Good Counsel, Receiver of Many. He holds the great cornucopia of wealth with one hand, and a dreadful staff with the other. He is called Zeus of the Earth. He rules the invisible world, the world that exists behind his cloaking helmet, the underworld. That god, of course, is Hades, brother of Zeus, ruler of the broad world beneath the earth, the unseen realm. The Dagda is not identical to the Greek conception of Hades, but he does appear to be a ruler of the spirit world and the earth. Of all places, he is most associated with the Brugnaboinia, otherwise called Newgrange. 
its Gaelic name may originally mean womb of the white cow. However, that womb is a passageway into the underworld, from which spirits emerge at Samhain, and where within historical memory dead kings were buried. The Dinchenhas entry says, Here slept a married pair after the battle of Mugturit yonder, the great lady and the dark Dagda. Not obscure is their dwelling there. The taking of the sheath says, Then Dagon departed from there, and the Makog remained in his sheath. That is a wondrous land. There are three trees perpetually bearing fruit, and an ever-living pig on the hoof, and a cooked pig, and a vessel with excellent liquor, and all of this never grows less. This is the conception of the otherworld dwelling place of dead kings who are eternally provided for, akin to the idea of the Dagda's inexhaustible cauldron. The fairy mounds that the Dagda rules and distributes are mounds of the dead. His homes become the homes of kings upon their death. Unlike in Greek tradition, that underworld is bright rather than dark and gloomy more akin to the Elysian fields, but it is an underworld nonetheless. This does not appear to be a Christianization of the Dagda, but is his original conception. There is a noticeable rift between Lug, the Fomorian killer, and the family of the Dagda. Not a single one of the Dagda's sons participated in the fight against the Fomorians, save perhaps Bovderek, meaning Red Crow, who doesn't appear in many of the early sources. Instead, several fought with the Fomorians. Bridget was in the camp of the Fomorians alongside her husband Bress. Their son, Ruidan, tried to kill the god Goivnu, and when he was felled by the smith's return blow, Bridget invented keening, a type of mourning for the dead. Angus Mac Og also fought with the Fomorians. The Dinchenhas entry for Tuum Regen says, Regen, of the children of impious Ham, from the army of strong smiting Balor, was a warrior of prowess and exploits, whom none could face in equal battle. Regen, it was, dangerous beyond dispute, that engaged the combat. He was leader of the retinue of red-armed Angus Mackendorg, with all his army. The warrior went his way in good sooth when he had slain the warrior woman, to demand an unjust tribute from the host of the Gales through an unrighteous claim. There met him face to face unaided, the king's son of the Gale. They fought a stern fight hard by the rock of Asul's son. The spot where the Fomor's head was struck off, it was a doughty deed, is called after him Tuum Regen. The Annals of Tiernach record the following for the year 1084. A great pestilence in this year which killed a fourth of the men of Ireland. It began in the south and spread throughout the four quarters of Ireland. This is the cause of that pestilence, namely, demons that came out of the North Islands of the world, three battalions, and in each battalion there were thirty and ten hundred and two thousand, as Angus Og, the son of the Dagda, told to Gilla Lugan, who used to haunt the ferry mounds every year at Sowing. Interesting is that Christians in 1084 were so desperate they were seeking out the aid of pagan gods, Angus was sought for information because he could reveal the knowledge of the other world, and he is sought by one who is named the servant of Bright Lug. Ogma was said to have written the first Ogma message in order to warn Lug about his wife, saying that she will be taken unless the birch guard against it. The exact role of the birch here is mysterious but it was used in ancient Gaelic purification rites and weddings. As medieval accounts say, it was placed in the house and its leaves upon the floor on the wedding day. We see the same struggle over a wife in Welshmith. 
Shay's wife, Lodaiwith, Flower Face, who is made of flowers by Math and Gwydion, and offered to Shay as his wife due to his mother's curse against him. However, she falls in love with Gronu Peber, a name which may mean Radiant Heron, and together they kill him. Shay is later revived from an oak tree by Gwydion and pays the blow back. The same myth also appears contained in the tale of the feud between Cúchulain and Cúroi over Blathnet, partially cognate with Blodaiwith. These stories seem to emulate a myth concerning Lug and another god who fight for possession of a goddess of the fertile earth, a type of Gaelic Persephone, perhaps. The same dynamic exists in Slavic folklore in the theft of Perun's wife, or cattle, by Veles, lord of the underworld. It isn't clear there is much space here between the identity of Kermit and his father, as Kermit himself declares when he says, I am the son of that Dagda, and all the wizardry and magic that he had, I have, and all the knowledge that he learned from that host, I have it. That the tale of Lug and Kermit may be thought of an, as an extension of a struggle between Lug and the Dagda may show up in the tale of Lugeth Riunderg, a very important high king. He kills Ferbeja Ferben, who had horns growing from his head. Ferben kills Clothru, Lugeth's mother, who is also his wife. Lugeth hunts him down and strikes him dead upon the summit of Slave Ullin. A passage grave atop the mountain used to be named for him. Given that Down, who is clearly identified as a lord of the House of the Dead, is thought to be a son of the Dogda, reinforces the idea that the Dogda is the lord of the underworld, and that many of his children have chthonic connections. The Dogda holds great sway over the grains and the milk, however he could also have the opposite power. The taking of the Shida says, even though it belonged to the sons of Mil after the conquest of the country, for the Tuatha De destroyed the corn and the milk round about the sons of Mil until they made an alliance with the Dagda. Afterwards, he saved their corn and milk. The power of the Shi folk over the crops and milk is one of the most attested beliefs of the Gaels, and very similar to the power of Germanic elves or dwarves. However, we also hear of another figure, not in myth so much as in cult practice and Christian accounts connected to the crops. Krom Kruach is also asked to preserve crops and milk, and is known from a 9th century source as Ken Kruach, meaning the head or leader of stack, mountain rick, or even slaughter. Eventually he becomes known as Krom Du, meaning the dark, crooked one. Because Ken Kruach is appealed to in order to protect milk and grains, some have thought this figure may be a representation of the Dagda or a god akin to him. In living folklore, Krom Du is linked to Lunasa, and in the past scholars have recreated a speculative myth about this god, one which is likely mistaken. This isn't the place to dwell on the nature of Krom, save to say that the name Krom Du is a Christian name, a name applied to the god to relabel him with a more depreciating name. But the god was originally believed to be luminous and represented with a golden image. Krom is not the Dagda, though they have certain overlapping functions. The overwhelming evidence suggests that the Dagda was primarily a god of the earth. He digs in the earth. He ensures the harmony of the seasons, the flow of energy of life and time, the crops and likely elements of the weather. His son Aid may have been the altar fire used for sacrifices and the cremation fire which would send the dead to the abode of the Dagda. He was also believed to be the origin of music. He has long been thought by some to be Dis Pater, of the Gauls, which Julius Caesar mentioned, or Sukelos, who holds the great pot 
and the long shafted hammer. However, it should not be excluded that such a figure could have been interpreted as Mercury. The Dogda is linked to borders, to the heaven and underworld. He is the mighty one of great knowledge, the son of every art, who is a trickster, a liar, a thief. His harp is the origin of music and seasons, and he can move between worlds. He's chosen as an envoy or a messenger to the Fomorians. And he's a lord of wealth and abundance and carries a staff which gives life with one end and takes it with the other. We may have further evidence for how the Dogda was interpreted by the Gales themselves. He may have been equated with the Semitic god Dagon, but another equation may appear in the tale The Battle of Findhorid, where it says, They were telling the druids to find out for them what would be the consequences of the battle and which of them would be defeated. They offered sacrifices to Mars, to Osiris, to Jove, and to Apollo. These are the sacrifices they offered, the flesh of dogs, pigs, and cats. Afterwards, they went upon the hides of old hairless bulls and on the hurdles of rowan trees, and their faces north towards hell. In Britain, Nodens cognate with Nuada, was equated at least sometimes with Mars. Mabon, cognate with Mac Og, was matched with Apollo. Yet what Gaelic god would be interpreted as Osiris? What medieval scholars would have known about Osiris came from Greek sources such as Plutarch. He describes the symbols of Osiris as being an eye and a scepter, and he connects him to fertility and death. From this list, only Osiris and Jupiter could be interpreted as the Dogda. But other than the Dogda's link to fertility, he does not actually share structural similarities to Jupiter. The nature of the Dogda is perhaps best put in the text, The Fitness of Names. Dogda, that is, the good god. He was an excellent god of the Gentiles. For the Tuatha de Danann worshipped him, for he was a god of the earth to them, for the greatness of his power. Echif Ol Athir, that is, greater was he than his father, or Ol Athir, a great father to the Tuatha de Danann was he. Ruid Ro Fessa, that is, it was he who had all of the knowledge of the Gentiles and it was he who had the three multiple forms. A god of knowledge, of harvest, of seasons, of harmony and music, the good god of druidism, the great god of existence, the lord of the earth. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please like, share, and subscribe, and consider supporting me through Patreon or PayPal. Your support helps me to make in-depth videos like this that take immense amounts of research and time to put together. Your support is very much appreciated. And as always, stand tall.